Ice cream has got to be one of my favorite treats. But even though I always loved ice cream, I never really appreciated all of the engineering that goes into it. Until now. I visited two of my favorite ice cream shops to learn about the processes they use to make ice cream. It turns out, they've engineered two very different processes for making ice cream. Luckily for me, both are equally delicious. Would you say that the process that you use to make ice cream is a technology? Yes, because for the most part, ice cream doesn't exist naturally. Vincent is an ice cream maker, and as a result, a process engineer. In his own shop, JP Licks, he's perfected the process, or the steps, used to make ice cream. Ice cream naturally would tend to be a milky sweet ice cube, mm -hmm. rather than this lickable, chewable, frozen dessert that has all these little air bubbles in there that no one thinks about, and all these fine little crystals that no one thinks about that makes it creamy, rather than an ice cube. Will you show me the technology you use to make your ice cream? No. Oh, we were so close. Okay, I know, I know. But Please? No, we're gonna talk, okay, yes. Oh, right. yes! Okay, okay. Vincent's goal was to make great ice cream. To develop the process for creating it, Vincent used the engineering design process, which is a series of steps engineers use to solve problems. He investigated ice cream recipes and the steps other people have used before. Then he imagined how he might design his own. We went back to where the action happens, the kitchen filled with ingredients, tools, and giant silver ice cream machines called batch freezers. I asked Vincent's team member, Donald, how the machines worked. So inside you have a beater assembly and you have blades on it. These blades, just like you'd have an ice cream freezer at home, scrape the sides of it as the sides freeze. This is the jacket, which is a cold jacket, which freezes it. Instead of uh, salt and ice, we've gone to refrigeration. So the ice cream is all in there being mixed up and sort of chopped by these blades as it's uh, freezing? What it does is put a little bit of air into the ice cream so it's not a solid block of sweetened cream. Mm -hmm. As it hits the side of the container, it will knock crystals smaller and smaller down until they're small crystals which you can't taste on your tongue. Vincent and Donald planned, created, and tested their own process for combining ice cream ingredients. We took a look at their strawberry ice cream. First we'll put the ice cream mix in the machine. It's cream, milk, sugar, corn syrup, milk solids, which is pretty much like skim milk powder. That's about it. Now what does the, the base taste like? I'll give you a sample if you'd like. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mm. It's very thick. Yeah. Next we added the strawberries, but not before Dawn blended them up. We don't want big pieces of strawberry in the ice cream for people to find and and make it less a less pleasurable experience. Because these strawberries would turn into just sort of icy yeah. strawberry yeah. cubes. Yeah. And so we want to blend them all up, I guess? Yeah, that's what we're Puree doing. Them. Puree, Puree them. Puree them. We're going to pour the, uh, the, the uh, strawberries into the machine and start it. Next, they poured in the stabilizer, which helps reduce ice crystals and creates a smooth texture. And then they added a mix of strawberry extract and citric acid. I'm introducing now the citric acid, now that it's pretty much frozen. So is that citric acid like lemon juice? Yes. Or so would that be sour? Yeah, it is quite sour. It's sour. Oh, quite sour. It's 50-50 uh, citric acid and water. So you put you're putting a souring ingredient into a sweet ice cream? It's a tartan. Tartan. You tartan. Know, to basically it give it um, a little more tartness than the strawberries have and to take the uh, edge off the sweet cream. Mm -hmm. So. Have you always added the, uh, the citric acid? Citric, no. Um, it's been over the years. So, oh. so even though you've been in business for 30 years, more than 30 years, you're still improving the process. Yeah. Vincent and Donald are still improving upon the old-fashioned, tried-and-true process of making ice cream, even when it comes to experimenting with new flavors. Was there ever an ice cream flavor that 
you were sure it was going to be really good and then turned out to be terrible? Uh, coffee and donuts, ice cream. Coffee and donuts. Sounds coffee great. and donuts, sounds good, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I researched which donuts held up the best in ice cream, uh -huh. how strong to make the coffee part of the ice cream. My first customer just so happened to be a policeman uh -huh. and I proudly said, I got a flavor you gotta try. And he takes a mouthful of it and he goes, why? <laughs> and I go, why? I go, because coffee goes good with donuts. He goes, but in an ice cream? That's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. And most people's reactions were either neutral or strongly negative. And then we tried it 10 years later. And I thought, time will come for this flavor, you know? <laughs> and same thing again, total failure. So now that we're talking about it, thank you. It's about time we tried again. <laughs> to his credit, some of the wild and new flavors Vincent has created, like spicy hot sauce ice cream, have gone on to win awards. Speaking of wild and new, I wondered if any other totally different processes for making ice cream had been created. Indeed, there had. I'd eaten ice cream my entire life. I love ice cream, you know. And when I first tasted liquid nitrogen ice cream, like, it, it was something that was so different. It was really, sort of, really impactful to me. Ash and his team run this shop, called Churn 2, and use liquid nitrogen to make their ice cream. Liquid nitrogen is a liquid that can transfer very cold temperatures very quickly. How did you develop your process for making ice cream? Uh, in the very beginning, you know, we, we did, we made a few batches that were kind of gross, you know, and, uh, and we were like, we were kind of like scratching our heads and like, oh, this, I don't know if this is going to work, you know. And eventually we kind of started fine tuning, tweaking, adjusting. One of the things that helped us was recording everything. So we weren't just blindly, you know, putting the same ingredients in again and, you know, oh, didn't we do that like, didn't we do that like five times ago or, you know, <laughs> did, did we try that didn't combination? Didn't milk make it yeah, watery? Exactly, you know. So you were, you were yeah. taking notes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Churn 2 was testing out a process for a new flavor and I asked if I could watch. Absolutely, let's get started. So we'll start with our uh, ice cream base and we, you know, we, we precisely measure everything. So this is exactly at two cups. So we will add this in. So if I were to take a sip of that right now, it would just taste like really kind of sweet cream? Sweet milk, yeah, sweet milk. Okay. Sweet milk. We'll add in our bowl. Go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn our mixing blades on. Add in our little bowl. So you're dumping the liquid nitrogen yeah, dumping it right, right onto the it. base. Right into it. So the steam feels kind of, is it steam? Is it smoke? What this is this that we're... It's um, condensation. It it's condensation, basically. So now, with it at the texture that we're at now, and the temperature, I guess you could say, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll add in our chocolate. What would happen if you put the all the ingredients together before you added the liquid nitrogen? Well, sometimes certain things need to be added in earlier on so that that mixing and incorporation process happens at the right stage because sometimes if it's too, if it's cold already, it's gonna remain hard. So if it's a little bit warmer um, in temperature, sometimes that's gonna incorporate a little bit faster. So it all depends on what ingredients you're working with. And it's kind of like the, maybe the difference of, you know, maybe if you think of a cookie, if you had, you know, your, some people like to dunk their cookies and some people would like to have their cookie and kind of follow that by drinking the milk. So it just depends on those textures and. Obviously, whenever you incorporate the two earlier on, uh, it will kind of soften. So we'll add this in. So it's just a nice, well-made chocolate. We'll keep going with our shot. Nice little crunch. Huh? So you can actually hear it in there, actually crunching itself up. So you're putting more liquid nitrogen in now? Right, yeah. Now we're going to complete the process. And that, and that will actually turn off our mixing blades. We'll pull this out. And then, you can actually see the ice cream has now been created. I noticed that Churn 2 made much smaller batches than JP Licks. Why? We tried to do larger batches, and we came to the point that we're using a lot of nitrogen, and it would get stuck on the mixing plate and just, just basically just go around the edges and not actually mix the ice cream. And we did the smaller batches, and it would just freeze too quickly. So we came up with this point, the point of doing 16 ounces was like that, that, that sweet spot. From revising their process, Churn 2 found the perfect amount of liquid nitrogen ice cream to make in each batch. 
what are some things you would recommend for someone who was developing their own ice cream process? Um, I, honestly, I would probably say it's really just it's creativity. You know, like um, you know, we one of the things that we ended up doing was making like an apple pie ice cream, and we literally took a slice of apple pie, chucked it into like apple pie a la mode. I mean, it was all in one, just wrapped up into every bite. I mean, we took devil dogs, we took, I mean, Oreos. I mean, we just chucked stuff in. We just kept chucking stuff in, fresh fruit. I mean, it's just experimentation, you know, and... and so, just try try something. Try and something. it might turn out to be a It, it might, might be, turn be out amazing. To be the best thing you've ever Yes, done. absolutely. It might be amazing. Like, really. <laughs> of course, I couldn't leave Ash's shop without trying some of the nitrogen ice cream. And back at J.P. Lick's, Vincent and Donald's traditional strawberry ice cream finished up, and I got to try that too. As with any engineering problem, there are always many different ways to meet your goal. Engineering a process for making ice cream is no different. Whether it's from a tried and true, but always improving process, or a newer process like using liquid nitrogen, I think we can all be grateful that the process to make ice cream exists.